What's up everybody? Welcome to my Saturday workout. It is deload day, last day of training for the week for me. I'm feeling good. I feel really good. I've had a really good week today. I had a couple of PBs this week. I got a personal best on my single arm hang transitions. I did five minutes unbroken. That is a huge accomplishment for me when I started doing single arm hang transitions. Oh, when was that? Maybe two or three years ago. Uh, I could barely do 90 seconds um, unbroken. So that's a big accomplishment. I also got six reps on both sides of single arm active passive hanging. You're going to see me do both of these exercises in just a minute, actually, once I finish um, doing this golfer's elbow uh, rehab exercise here, or treatment, I should say, not exercise. And um, so six reps is, is a really huge accomplishment as well because... You know, I had a slap tear in both shoulders. Um, one was, I think, five years ago and one was four years ago, I think. It was about that, about that time. And, you know, I've been rebuilding myself ever since then. And so now I'm getting stronger than I've ever been before, you know, which is a big, big, big thing after something like slap tears. A lot of people think that once you've had a life-changing injury like a slap tear, that that's it. Your best days are behind you. And, and I don't agree with that. I think that we can always get better. And so I didn't have surgery. I've only had surgery on one injury that I had. That was 25 years ago. That was a torn Liz Frank ligament. And that really did require surgery to, to hold the bones back together while the ligament repaired itself. But everything else, all my other sports related injuries, I haven't had surgery on. And so I didn't get surgery on my slap tears. And I'm doing really well now. And so it's a big accomplishment. Oh, when I get uh, a PB on something to do with my shoulders. <laughs> big deal. Oh, that is painful. Look at all the blood rush back into my elbow. Look at that. Woo! So what I'm doing here is, this is like a metabolic flush. I'm uh, basically forcing all of the blood and all of the fluids from my elbow out back through the system. And then what happens is because it's all been squeezed out, it's so tight, you know, that I can barely handle the pressure here. And then you uh, and then I go from here. So you know you're squeezing it, squeezing it, squeezing it, and then when you release it, the body has to bring blood back to the area, and so you get this whole, you know, new uh, this um, a whole lot of oxygenated blood flooding back into the area. And it's really really good. So these things are really cool for. Um, wrist, knee, ankle, or elbow injuries. Not very good for shoulders or hips. Pretty much impossible to wrap up your sh shoulder or your hip with this thing. But ankle, knee, el wrist or elbow injuries, very, very good. I've got a link in the description of this video for them if you want. They're called Physical Therapy Floss Bands. You can get it on Amazon. I've found it for the cheapest price for you guys. Of course, we get a very small commission, which uh, helps the channel. Like all of the equipment that I use, you can get it in the uh, in the description of the videos. Woo! Look at that. Oh, look at that. It looks like I've got. Uh, well, I don't know what that looks like. All those, all those lines, but you can definitely see a bunch of burst capillaries there. So I've had golfer's elbow it's for the second time in my life now. I've had it uh, probably, I don't know, probably about five months. But it's when it started, it was terrible. It was like a five or six out of ten pain. But for the last couple of months, it's just been lingering with a one out of ten pain. And I, <laughs> I saw this at the top of my shelf. And I'd completely forgotten about it. I completely forgot how much this was a part of my... Um, golfer's elbow rehab the first couple of the first time that I had it so I found it again started using it and 
it's um it's doing me wonders it's really really good and this is a body blade this i used for uh in the for part of my um, rehab journey for the slap tears and now i use it here and there for my warm-up i don't necessarily do it every day but really good way to warm up the rotator cuff good way to stimulate the rotator cuff because it causes the humerus to do that in the glenohumeral joint which not many other exercises do that and that's pretty um pretty unique for the rotator cuff so it challenges it in a very very different way hardest part of these single arm hang transitions for me is my grip by far the um it just hits those calluses so hard it's not grip strength it's the uh, pain and discomfort of your calluses being pulled very challenging such a good exercise for um, flexibility in the shoulders for the lats especially of course also for um, grip strength and for pulling strength you know this um this transition from side to side you have to do a real really good active uh, pull here like this and then the idea is that now I'm just hanging passively, completely relaxed and trying to do it without swinging. And you start with a three second hang and then you work your way up to a 10 second hang like what I'm doing. Well, maybe eight or nine seconds now, now that my grip's starting to go on this hand. I'm not going to push it today because it's a deload day. I did a PB on that earlier this week for five minutes. So that was two minutes, 15. It's pretty good. All right, now I'm into hip mobility. Well, hip flexibility, I should say. This is uh, for external rotation. And what I'm doing is a really strong end range contraction in my external rotators here. Working as hard as I can. Ah. If you're not working as hard as you can at your absolute end range, then it's not an end range contraction and it won't have the desired result. <clears throat> so end range contractions have to be really tough. And when you start with them, oh man, it's very likely that you'll be cramping. When you do it, you'll cramp and you'll be in pain and, and then straight into a loaded stretch. Okay. And I'm using a 15 degree incline here because I don't have great um, external rotation in my hips. And if I try and go flat or even on the floor, which is way harder into a pigeon, it's way too much pressure on my knee, lateral pressure. And lateral pressure for the knee is really bad. You do not want to be doing that. And that's a really good way to increase your hip external rotation. All right, let's see what I can do here. Mm. 
So, got my six reps, which was my PB that I got this week. Two extra forced reps with assistance. And break through to that seven rep range on my way to the goal of 10 reps. Warming up, I gotta get some shorts. All right, today this is my warm up for my free handstands. So I just do one 30 second hold on the wall just to warm up everything for a handstand and hopefully get a better straight line during my actual handstand practice. <sighs> okay. Ah, oh, and now the dreaded compression strength. Oh, I hate this. contraction into the loaded flexibility. Oh, a cold weight plate on my back feels terrible. Mm. 
loaded eccentrics like this are a really good way to develop flexibility because they they increase flexibility whilst also increasing muscle hypertrophy so you know you're thickening the muscle fibers but you're also teaching the nervous system that this range is okay because you can control the strength so it's a really good way to develop flexibility that is usable and that's safe that's not a range of motion where you can get injured and then when I come down like this for a bit of it like about a 30 second hold and I just go through some tensing my quads so I tense my quads and then relax again and tense and relax again Okay, not a bad first set. Not bad. All right, come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah, God, I hate that. Done hard and fast. Oh, come on. Just hold here and contract my quads hard ah, and then relax and then again contract hard and relax another hard one and relax one more Oh, this is good training. I'm making really good progress at the moment. A lot of things that I'm working on, I can see objective improvements with what I'm doing. It's really, really good. And my injuries are becoming less and less of an issue. I'm very close to being completely symptom free of the golfer's elbow. It's really good. Things are moving in the right direction and I'm building muscle and strength and flexibility and all those good things. Okay. All right, round three, round two. What am I talking about? Round two. Okay. Come on, Rad, let's go. Good set. Come on, get it together. Good set. Come on. Oh, okay, come on. Come on.
Not as good as the first set, but I still got some, still got some time there. Got some volume in. All right, come on. Okay, let's get there. Mm. Ah, God, come on. Come on. Mm. Woo. Good stuff. Okay. Getting there. Okay. All right. Let's do this. Come on. Focus. Thirty seconds, baby. Boom. That's what I'm talking about. I'm actually gonna just do three sets of compression strength and pancake today because it's a deload workout. Ah, oh, yes. Thirty seconds. You really got to celebrate those little wins, you know, it might, like you do handstands every day like I do and, you know, at my level, I'm not consistently getting 30 seconds yet. And so if I get one, it's like a big deal. And sometimes it can just, you can wash it under the rug because you do so much handstands or whatever it is you're working on. And like, oh, yeah, I got 30 seconds, but no, it's a big deal. I'm happy. It's been a really good week this week. I feel very accomplished today. Had some good wins, a couple of good personal bests. Really good week to come back, you know, after those two weeks of recovery, after surgery. It's awesome. I feel really good. Feel really good. Okay, stop it. Okay.
Okay, one more round of this. And then into some flow. Ah, oh, that was good. That felt good. It felt good too. I felt really strong on my arms. I could really feel the ground under me for the majority of that. Hold. It's a big deal unlocking skills like handstands and all the things that I'm working on when you're in your mid 40s. Like it's so much harder than it is to learn new things when you're in your 20s or even 30s. So got to be proud of your achievements. Come on. wasn't as clean as the third set but you know what I still got 35 seconds and there's a bunch of times there where you can see I had to use the wall a couple of times but there was also a few times where I was really losing it and I was able to bring it back I was able to save it you know and that's all that first knuckle push-up strength and you know the shifting of the weight with your hands so it's uh pretty cool I'm pretty happy with that And believe it or not, I am getting better at that goddamn move. It's been a real work in progress for me to make any substantial progression with that movement. When my coach Roy Gold gave it to me, after the first phase, he had to give me a regressed version that was way easier because I was just, I just couldn't do it. Just had absolutely no strength. After those slap tears to be able to push and hold my body in that position. So this is a big improvement. Feeling good as well, I'm feeling fitter. And when I look at myself in the videos, I can see that I'm building muscle and, you know, I'm in good shape. That's good. I'm approaching, you know, the hundredth workout now. I mean, I think this is 83 today, 83 or 84, can't remember. But, uh, you know, hopefully for those of you that are watching, you know, my goal is really to show an extended period of time of training so you can see the work that goes into it. And it's just, and you see the, you see the good days, you see the bad days. It's not all peaches and cream. Yeah. 
But you, you just keep going. You get the work done and you get the results you want. You always see me come to my phone between sets. I'm recording my uh, my reps and my weight. Well, in this case, just my reps. And starting my rest timer. Because my workout's like, you know, rest between sets is actually one of the variables in periodization. I'm getting hot. I'll take the shirt off. Rest, um... Rest intervals between sets is one of the variables of periodization. So when you're doing a program, the rest time between sets, it has to be adhered to just like the weight, just like the reps, just like the exercise. So that's another reason why you always see me go to my phone straight away between sets so that my rests are um, accurate. Going down to see Yanni today, my brother. If you didn't know, the co-owner of Unity Gym, who you never see on the videos, because he he does all the finances and the customer support and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, going down to see him and my two nephews and our dad. Gonna have a big family catch up today. a lot harder than you'd think it's uh i have to move this camera this way man it's um <sighs> yeah you just the way that you have to shift your weight and you got to move all in one plane like on a line do it slow and controlled it is harder than what i thought when i first started doing it um, and the hardest part is the transition of weight from one side to the other for me. Um, after these slap tears. Okay. I'm just going to try and make every set a little bit better than the last one.
definitely wasn't better than the last one. But I was trying something. And so you have to think about what you were trying and uh, make it better. <laughs> I feel so good on Saturday doing my workout when I've I've done all my workouts all week. Such a feeling of accomplishment for me. My values really align with or are tied with um, physical development. So a week of getting all my workouts done is a good week. 